Hello, it's Whimsical Auntie again, and it is time for Chapter 5 from Uncle Remus, His Songs and His Sayings by Joel Chandler Harris. And this chapter is called The Story of the Deluge and How It Came About. One time, said Uncle Remus, adjusting his spectacles so as to be able to see how to thread a large darning needle with which he was patching his coat. One time, way back yonder, fo' yo was born, honey, and fo' Mars John or Miss Sally was born. Way back yonder, fo' any of us was born, the animals and the creatures sort of lection round mung day cells, till at last they grieved for to have assembly. In them days, continued the old man, observing a look of amazement on the little boy's face, in them days, creatures had lots more sense than they got now. Let alone that, they had sense same like folks. He was touch and go with them too, man. And when they make up their minds what had to be done, twat mo and mention for it was done. Well, they elected that day had a whole assembly for to sort of straighten out martyrs and hear the complaints. And when the day come, they was on hand. The line, he was dar, cause he was the king, and he had to be there. The rhinoceros, horse, he was dar, and the elephant, he was dar, and the camels, and the cows, and plumb down to the crawfishes, they was dar. They was all dar. And when the lion shook his mane, and took his seat in the big chair, then the session begun for to commence. What did they do, Uncle Remus? asked the little boy. I can't scarcely call to mind exactly what they did do, but they spoke speeches and hollered and cussed and flung the language round, just like when your daddy was going to run for the legislature and got left. Howsoever, they arranged their affairs and explained their business. By and by, while they were sputing longer one another, the elephant trampled on one of the crawfishes. Cause when that creature put his foot down, whatsomever's underdog was bound for to be squished. And they wasn't enough for that crawfish left for to tell that he'd been down. This make the other crawfishes mighty mad. And they sort of swarmed together and drawed up a kind of Paramble with some war fours in it and read her out in December. But bless gracious, such a racket was going on that nobody ain't hear it, exceptin' maybe the mud turkle and the spring lizard. And their influence was powerful lacking. By and by, whilst the unicorn was sputin' with the lion and while the hyena was a laughing to herself, the elephant. <coughs> squished another one of the crawfishes, and little moan he'd a root the mud, mud turkle. Then the crawfishes, what day was left on them, swarmed together and drawed up another paramble with some more waffles. But they might as well have sung old Dan Tucker to a hurricane. The other creatures was too busy with their fussing for to spawn onto the crawfishes. So dar they was the crawfishes, and they didn't know what minute was going to be next, and they kept on getting madder and madder and scareder and scareder, till by and by they gun the wink to the mud turkle and the spring lizard, and then they bowled little holes in the ground and went down out of sight. Who did, Uncle Remus? asked the little boy. The crawfishes, honey. They bowed into the ground and kept on bowing till they unloosed the fountains of the earth. And the water squirted out and rose higher and higher till the hills was covered and the creatures was all drowned. And all because they let on among themselves that they was bigger than the crawfishes. Here's a picture. Then the old man blew the ashes from a smoking yam and proceeded to remove the peeling. Where was the ark, Uncle Remus? 
asked the little boy. Which ark's dead? asked the old man in a tone of well-feigned curiosity. Noah's ark, replied the child. Don't you pester with old man Noah, honey. I bound he took care of that ark. That's what he was dire for, and that's what he done. Leastways, that's what they tells me. But don't you bother longer that ark, seppin' your mammy fetches it up. They might have been two deluges, and then again they mountain. If they was any ark in this year what the crawfish is brung on, I ain't hearin' tellin' it. And when they ain't no arks round, I ain't got no time for to make em and put em up in there. It's getting your bedtime, honey. The end. Next is chapter six. Mr. Rabbit grossly deceives Mr. Fox. Bye for now.